Hello and welcome to GTS by Procedural Worlds. GTS is a sophisticated terrain shader that adds high fidelity detail and features to your new or existing terrains. GTS provides a significant advantage over traditional terrain shaders, allowing you to achieve far more realistic and detailed results. In addition to providing better detail, GTS also offers several other benefits. It is easy to use and can be quickly integrated into your existing terrain workflow. GTS is also highly scalable, so it can be used for anything from small terrains to large landscapes. You can find more information about this tool by navigating to Procedural Worlds, GTS, and opening the PDF file located in the documentation folder. With that in mind, let's get started. Here we have a project that utilizes the high definition render pipeline and has an existing terrain that has been generated and painted by Gaia. If we look at our terrain, we can see that its material uses Unity's default terrain lit shader to render it to the scene. If we wish to use GTS, we're going to need to open Window, go to Procedure Worlds, GTS, and open the GTS Manager. The GTS Manager window allows us to select the GTS profiles that we wish to apply to our terrains in our scene. GTS profiles are just scriptable objects that contain a bunch of settings and configurations for controlling the appearance of the terrain. If we create a new profile, this will create a new scriptable object in the root assets directory, and now we can name it and store it anywhere in our project. Now that we have our new profile, let's then hit apply profile and you'll be asked to create texture arrays. It is necessary to generate these texture arrays so that the terrain shader knows what textures to use. So I'm going to hit yes. Once the profile is applied, we can then start making changes to the profile settings to see how they affect the appearance of our terrain. Before we start playing around with these profile settings, let's first look at the texture layer settings panel. This panel lists copies of all of the texture layers gathered from the terrains this profile was applied to. Modifying these layers will not change the original terrain layers directly. If you wish to manually reset the information gathered from the terrains, simply clear the layers and call refresh layers so GTS can copy these layers again. Depending on the currently enabled profile setting, you'll notice that each of the GTS layers will have some independent controls to adjust how it behaves with these profile settings. If we enable detail, for example, each GTS layer will have a detail amount parameter. And the same applies for some of the other profile settings. Now let's head over to the profile settings panel. If you wish to learn more about these settings, you can select the question mark next to the panel to display more information under each parameter of the profile. The first setting we're going to configure is our detail settings. These controls are for adding artificial detail into the terrain to make it look more interesting and it helps break up texture tiling on our terrain. GTS also comes with a bunch of normal textures that you can use which are located in the content resources folder. You can control the near tiling amount which is closest to the camera, along with its corresponding strength value ranging from 0 to 1. You can also control the far tiling amount, which is further from the camera, as well as its corresponding strength value. It's also worth noting that the global settings panel controls the blend distance of all the near and far settings that you see in the profile. Next, let's look at the geo settings. The geo settings provide a bunch of controls for how the camera views sedimentary rock accumulation. You can control the strength, normal strength, scale, and offset values for both near and far of the camera. The near controls affect how the sedimentary rock appears when the camera is close to it, while the far controls affect how it looks when the camera is far away from it. Adjusting the strength value will make the sedimentary rock more or less visible, while adjusting the normal strength will change how pronounced the effect is. Since this effect is for our rock textures, we can go to our texture layer settings, select our non-rock textures, and set the geo amount all the way down to zero. This will ensure that only the rock textures will be utilizing this effect. Next up is our height settings. This allows us to configure the height blending of our textures on our terrain. Here we have a scenario where we've suddenly painted this rocky texture to this part of the terrain. If we change the blend factor 
we can see the overall amount of contrast blending between the layers. Individual control of certain layers can be adjusted in the Texture Layer Settings panel. If we go ahead and select the GTS layer for it, we can see that we have more fine grain control over how the height blending affects this layer individually. The Tessellation Settings panel controls displacement mapping on terrains. It's worth noting that these settings can be quite expensive to run and only appear in HDRP. If we switch to shaded wireframe mode, we can see the effect that the multiplier has on this layer. The distance parameter controls the minimax range for the tessellation density. If we go back to the GTS layer settings for the rocks, we can see that we also have some more control over how the tessellation works for this specific layer. If you play around with some of these settings, you can achieve some pretty remarkable results. Next, we're gonna have a look at the snow settings. This panel controls the appearance of snow on our terrains. These settings come with albedo, normal, and mask textures by default. You can control things like the overall power of the snow, the mean height at which the snow starts from, edge blending, slopes, and various other settings. GTS has been made to work seamlessly with Gaia, so as you can see, the objects spawned by Gaia are being affected by the setting. You can add custom support for this easily by modifying your custom shader graphs. Please see the documentation PDF for more information on this. The Variation Settings panel allows you to use a texture to influence the variation on your terrain. By default, GTS comes with a variation texture and you can control the varying tile amounts by modifying size A, size B, and size C parameters, as well as the intensity that influences the final output on the terrain. Finally, we have our Texture Array Settings panel. This panel gives you a significant amount of control over how the texture arrays are generated. You can control the anisotropic filtering level of the texture, the mipmap bias of the texture, the texture size, and you have some significant control over how these images are compressed. It is recommended to consider these settings as they will drastically affect the build size of your project. The size of the texture arrays affects the amount of data being pushed to the GPU and can also affect build size. If you have modified the settings in any way, you need to recreate the texture arrays for the changes to be reflected in the terrain. This can be done by clicking the Create Texture Arrays button. In summary, we've gone from using Unity's standard terrain shader to a more advanced and customizable terrain shader. With this system, you can control things like detail, height blending, snow effects, tessellation, and much more. If you wish to learn more about this product, or any of our other tools, head on over to Canopy where you can find more information about this product or you can browse and post in the forums. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and if you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to this channel. As always, thanks for watching.